When you get a new tool, are you like me? You need to get it out and play with it. That's how I learn best. I'm Pat Sloan and I'm going to show you how I approach learning to use my new die cut machine from Crafter's Companion called the Gemini. I showed it to you the other day. Here is the die box that is part of what I got because it's a die cut so there's dies and and the machine itself and I'm going to show you right here on the table how I approached all this. Now I want to remind you that for December I have an exclusive, you can get the machine and this box uh, companion for 25% off and free shipping. So that's really cool if you are looking to get a die cut machine or if you really like this one which is super awesome. So scraps, that is how I approach this. I don't want to start with a brand new project. I don't want to say I've got a deadline, I have to get this done for Christmas or a wedding or whatever, you know, I want to use my scraps when I'm learning something new because that way I can approach it more casually and I don't get like all focused on what the project is. I don't want to worry about the project. I want to learn how to use the tool. That's the purpose of what I'm doing. So behind me, is one of my scrap busting quilts. I cut two and a half inch squares and whenever I'm sewing any patchwork, I'm sewing two of them together when I start and then when I end to get the threads going. And then I build these, what I call free quilts. They're just from my scraps. Sometimes they're color coordinated like this one is the green and then a cream. And sometimes they're just really random. I give them as gifts, I give them to charities. That's how I, I build them is by these two and a half inch squares. So that's what I'm going to show you. We're going to walk through the Crafters Companion Gemini and I'll show you how I approach learning to use it. All right, let's go down to the table and take a look because first I want to show you the scraps. We all have them. They accumulate, they multiply, they're like crazy, aren't they? Your scraps. They, you just, you know, you think you got rid of them and then more appear. So here's a stack of lights. So I have a whole stack of light scraps. I have some uh, darker scraps. Here's some other ones. Uh, so I keep these, you know, and to you, uh, to me and you, scraps might be different things. I have fairly large scraps because of the way I work, because I'm a business. You might be keeping very, very tiny things. So I'll show you how I approach this. When I'm cutting the two and a half inch squares, I am doing them and putting them into these shoe boxes by color. And I'll do a blog post, I'll link everything here because I wanna show you like where I, how these are, where I store them to get, to get to them. So this is what we're gonna do first because to learn the machine, it is crazy good to have some purpose and reason that you're actually using it. So here is the Gemini and these are the, uh, pa the, the plates. So you have a set of plates that work, and I gave you a, uh, a link to Jen uh, Tyrone's uh, video. She works with the company, and you saw her walk through all this, and I'll link that again. But there's two clear plates that go on the top and the bottom. You can see there, that one. They're exactly the same. And then sandwiched in between, I have, we'll have the metal. You can see I've been using it. And then we'll go to the fabric and the die, and then this plastic, you know, um, smoky, like, or like, you know, what's that word? Opaque, is that the right word? That goes on top. And then you do the clear again. So you're always putting the very hard, clear plastic first, this one, and then my metal plate. The big key too is to be rotating, rotating, rotating these all the time, because that way uh, they, the, the machine is pressing. It's going to be pressing very, very hard and it makes noise when it's doing that because it's pressing all of this. See when I even do that, it's going to make even more noise than that as it's going through. Plus it's crunching the die through the fabric. So here we go. The dies come in, let me get the box over here. Uh, it has a little box with all the drawers. Let me put that over and I'll grab it have to keep everything organized here. So here's the box and it has a drawer with each, like here are the triangles. I have some on there to show you what we're gonna do. And then I have quarter squares in the middle. I won't pull that out right now. And then on the bottom, there's the paper that tells you what the sizes are and they're inside. So I've pulled out uh, the two and a half inch die. So let me show that to you. 
So here's the two and a half inch die, and they're very different than other die cut machines. They're wire, and they're very, very firm, and they have actually, if you can see, there's a ridge side, and I'm going to flip it over, and then there's a totally smooth side. So it is going to go down on the fabric just as I'm holding it. Let me just throw this fabric up here. So there is the ridge down because the machine is going to come in and press, press, press like that, and it's going to cut through the fabric. So I do not want the die up because nothing will happen. The die um, ridge goes down against the fabric. This is where the fabric's going to go. Let's get a little bit closer while we're doing this part. So you can see what I'm doing. And you want to move this around. That's why there are so many um, you know, indents, because this is where the die has been chopping. So this die I was just showing you was the one and a half inch. We're going to go and work with the bigger one first. I think I may have said, I think I grabbed the wrong one when I picked it up. This is the bigger one. This is the two and a half inch. And we're going to cut things. Cut, cut, cut. So what I am, I am crazy about this because I am not going to sort of think too hard about it, but I need to get some layers because that's how it works best. If I look at this, I could do, put, let me get a fabric that you can see a little better. Here we go. I think you can see the dye. Ah, much better. All right. So if I just did this and put it, there was, there'd be two layers I was cutting and then I could come and get like another two. Let me just you know show you my thought process. That would be four layers. You can do six up to eight just depending on on uh, kind of the fabric. So if I wanted to do eight, I could just put it there, but that's not very efficient, is it? You know, you have, you know, there's waste. There's lots of waste. So we're going to try to get this as uh, sort of compact. That would be the best word, compact as possible. So if I've got the two and a half inch die, I can fold like this, and then I can fold like that into three, into a, into a, like an accordion. One, two, three, that's three levels. So I can put that die there. And then I can do the same for the one, uh, another one. These are like um, parts of a Jolly Bar, I think. So they're, you know, just leftovers or parts of a layer cake I had. So if I want to do this, now I have six layers, right? And I'm going to put that on top, and then I'm going to take the little one, and I have the ridges down, so I'm going to put the little one there. That's the one and a half, and this is the two and a half. Now I will put the plastic on top. I'll get the metal lined up, put the plastic on top, and I'm going to pull this out so now we can go through the machine and see what's happening. There we go. Let me adjust this a little bit so... This is the front of the machine here, and the back of the machine is going to come out. You cannot even stick your fingers in there because they have a guard. Okay, put this on top, and now it's a sandwich, and what I'm going to do is the machine is on, so you can see the lights are on, and I am just going to hold it in the front and start feeding it in, but keeping my hands in the front, keeping them right up here until it catches, and at one point you're going to feel it. There it goes it's taking it on its own. Now it's crunching it, so you can hear it go through there, and it's coming out the back side. So I will grab it, and we can see how it did. Just so cool! So when it comes out the back, I will grab the whole thing. Usually I do it with two hands, and I pull this part off, and then now I have here, let's get close so you can see me take it out down, down, down. I want you to miss anything. All right. So my, uh, whoop, there we go. So these have pressed through and what I'm going to do is just pull out, whoop, I got too much there. Pull out all of them. Ta-da! I grabbed the edge of that bottom one. I didn't mean to. So here are, here are the dies cut, and here is the next one cut. So I have the small, the one and a half and two and a half, and from here you can see, let me just, uh, you can see the, that there was 
very little waist. There's a couple of spots here. So if you are somebody who really loves, you can take that and do and, and not waste it. You can get that out of here and out of this one. So I've got two here. This one might be a little too small, but it's how you fold it, you know, so that's what will give you that, um, you know, waste is like if I'm folding an accordion style like I did, I'm going to have very little waste. All right, let me just talk to you for one minute here so that we can uh, we can chat a little bit. What I have also is the triangles. And for the triangles, I really like that I can be doing several, uh, you know, I can fold them up and then I can actually do like a bunch of different, like here is a big triangle that I had left over and I will be putting that with the square behind it and then cutting what I need out of this. So that it's really effective if you're doing this um, scrap, you know, scrap cutting things up. Because ultimately what I want for the triangles is sets of triangles where I can do a quilt like this made of two and a half inch half square triangles. And that way, those two and a half inch half square triangles could, be, could do a lot of other things too. So I want to show you that really, really quick. So I put, whoops, here's my waist. And I do have a couple things in there that I don't want to throw away. And we're going to come back down now and work on the counter. Here we go. So we'll do, we'll flip this around. Because remember I said the key, the key for your, your dies uh, to make, the, they're going to get sort of beat up looking. You know, that's just how it works because any die cut machine is like this. You have a lot of pressure and a, you know, with the, the cutting. So you just want to th keep things moving around all over the place. Now press it down with, I'm putting, putting the triangle has the same thing. It has ridges on one side, smooth on the other. So I'm putting that ridge down and then I, I could put other shapes. I could put some two and a half inch on here. Let's see, I could do that. There's four, two and a half. Well, is that big enough? No, they're a little bit too small. See, I can't do, I can't do that. They're a little bit too small. But I could put, not as four, but I could probably put as three, right? So this, do this accordion style and get three on there. Let's see, got that. And so get it all the sort of, you know, it doesn't have to be too fussy. There we go. So there's three there. And if I wanted to put five, I could just go ahead and layer like that. Put two more, put those ones, these dots on there, get all of that cut at the same time so that it's more efficient to put more dies on. I'll put this one down here. So I'm sort of moving the dies around on the metal too and taking the plates, I'll rotate one. It's always be rotating, rotating, rotating. Now I will put, pick up the sandwich and I just hold it at the end and feed it in like this and hold, feed it in from the front until you start to feel it um, catch. So it's going to, whoop, there we go. Got it going. And it's crunching through the dies. It's got to do two of them, right? Because I put two dies in there. Oops. You can see it coming out the back end. Forgot to move the camera. Doing this all myself. Here we go. So here are the two and a half inchers. So I now have the, the gray dots. And then I have the navy that was right underneath. So there's more left over of the gray dots so that I could take this and use the smaller die again, see? And I could fold those up. And then for the triangles, I have two, I have two blue ones, and then two, three, four, five red ones. And if you notice on the triangle, let me just lay it here so you can see it. What's really nice is they have the blunt edges. So basically, if you wanted to uh, bank up some 
uh, fabrics like a red and white like this when you cut them then when you pull them out of the stack of here they would already be together and then you would just go to your machine and sew them through so that's something I'll talk about another day because this is a lot of a lot of stuff here alrighty let's see I want to show you one other let's put all of these triangles over here I want to show you one other way to think about approaching so there's extra here so I want to put this in my pile to cut off of that this has um, really no look at that really no waste that was I mean there's that little part there which I think there is a tinier triangle let's see don't know if it would fit let's take a look there's one in here this is how you get them out you just grab them they have like they're like picture frame sort of um, indents so would this fit on here look at that so I can make teeny tiny um, half square triangles if I if I wanted to I don't know if I want to get that crazy I am not a super crazy keep every thread of scrap person but I know a lot of you uh, like to do that like to make really tiny patchwork so this I have just that kind of waste over there which isn't too bad if you make string quilts you could keep that okay I want to show you another way of layering and I think I'm going to use the two and a half the two and a half inch square because I have a piece here let me get it yeah this is a funky piece here so I'll leave this close up you can see what I'm doing I have also I'm going to show you while I'm working I have this uh, tray the top of my lid over there this is where I'm putting all the fin usually I'm a little more organized that one needs to go over there all the finished cut things so that uh, I don't lose the dies because the dies are tiny and so I don't want to misplace them so here's my my one my one and a half was laying over here so I want to put it up there and the two and a half is right down here but I keep them on that tray top that way it really keeps track of them so they don't get lost all right let's let's think about this guy I love these kitties so it'd be cool to have a pink a really girly springy kind of uh, two and a half inch square quilt so there is the two and a half and if I want to pull that up now I have three layers of the two and a half and then if I want to do the one and a half over here did you see I had this tail so I pulled the tail up and then I'm able to put that square there you could even get maybe a little more creative double fold that tail see I took it and made it doubled you know once and then back over on itself that will get me another one out of here and if I wanted to I could take this and put it underneath so I could go ahead and and uh, get something done out of this part and then I only have you know I have a layer of three on this side so maybe I will take another cream thing and try fold this right try fold this and put it here so now I'm getting uh, a lot of maximum use out of out of the die you know I'm getting I and mean, I don't want to cut anything so I'm just going to layer that over and put let's see it's just going to get pressed none of that will get cut the only thing that's cutting is where these two dies are so I'm going to put this on top oops clear one first let's rotate it so we're going to rotate it right have the metal lined up over the clear on the bottom there put this on put this on and then so I have layers and then I'm going to hold it at the front I'm going to feed it oops they slide a little bit sometimes so okay so I'm going to feed it through right at the front here until it starts grabbing on its own there it goes you know it just takes a second and all of a sudden it's grabbing on its own let me and you don't have to push it you just sort of slide it until you feel that grab but you want to hold it right up close the sandwich with two hands and that's how you get the uh, get it in there even and get the pressure even as it goes all right so we made more scraps whoops okay, let me get this down 
because I like to show you when it comes out. It's kind of like magic. So I've got the gray, right? One, two, three gray, and then one, two, three kitties. Three gray and three kitties, they go over here. And then the little, the little ones, here they go. And they're all out of, out of this guy. So everything is cut through. Now you do have to check every so often, you know, if you're using this method to be sure that you got it all square. That one might be a little, it's a little short on one side because when I folded it, I didn't get it all the way under this die. So, you know, it's actually in the scheme of things for it's not going to hurt anything. It's just a little fraction too small. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. This is the best way to really learn how to work with a tool is to uh, to get it out and have a scrap project. I have a lot of scrap, pro I have a lot of blocks, free blocks you can do for cutting up. I have uh, some stars with nine patches in the middle. That's a good scrap buster. This is super easy, it's, you know, just the squares. Then if you want to add in sprinkle and half square triangles instead, you can work with that. Uh, the box uh, that comes with this promo that we have of the combo has also the quarter square triangles. So let me show you, let me just pull that out, that drawer. I can show you what the, the quarter squares are. Now I am going to, for the flower, a flower bouquet that is my weekly sew along for 2019 starting in January, I will be using these dies. I will give, be giving you directions to do it with a um, rotary cutter and a roller. But I'm also going to show you each week how I cut the block from the dies. So you can see how that's going on. I'll also be doing some scrap busting at the same time because if I'm only cutting one block. I probably might as well throw in scraps and cut those up too. So these are the quarter square die uh, folder that you get in the box. I'm just, I'm just so excited because I can play around, get things layered up, zoom it through, uh, and it's very quick. I did this the other day, I started I did not do this whole box, but I started taking, I took a box and I just went through a stack and just went, you know, it's, it's kind of neat. You could watch, um, you know, you could listen to my podcast while you're doing it or some other podcast. You could be watching a show, just put in your, you know, just sort of zone out and, and go through and get your, uh, get your scraps cut up into shapes. Or if you want to work on a block, like, um, the link shows you the, four blocks that were done with my star uh, pattern. And they went into a little table mat where you could expand that out and do an entire quilt of those. All of these things are doable and they help you learn how to use the machine and get comfortable with it. Big tip, always be taking your plates and rotating them, rotating them, rotating them so that you're not putting them through in the same direction. You want to be you know changing that up as you go along so that they don't get too crazy. They will get a little warped, and you turn them, and then they'll kind of you know relax, and, and you know, that's why you turn them because there's just a lot of pressure with this machine. So excited! Uh, if you have a question, leave it down below, and I will get back to you on it. Uh, I will leave, I will respond to the to the questions in the comment area. And I'm very excited to be sharing with you the Crafter's Companion, Gemini. Uh, so I'm Pat Sloan. Follow me at Facebook at Quit Along with Pat Sloan. Find everything I'm doing at patsloan.com and sign up for my notices so you don't miss anything. Talk to you next time.